Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for joining me today. And to all of those who did join me on my first live stream, I really enjoyed answering your questions and doing the tutorials and just basically interacting, interacting with you. So I uh, really appreciate you uh, joining me today. Um, as I said the first time, the purpose for this is to basically show you how I put together my tutorials and um, what the process is essentially. So um, let's just uh, jump in and, uh, and we'll just uh, chat, spend some time together. So hopefully you're looking at the Photoshop file that we're going to be creating today. Uh, this is a water reflection. Uh, now I did do this quite a while ago, so many of you might uh, remember it. Uh, maybe you did it recently, but um, I made some changes, um, streamlined it a little bit more. So um, yeah, let's just jump into it. Uh, so this, uh, actually, let me let me just go to the chats before I uh, start. Okay. Um, okay, so Nightcore's channel says, Hi, can you make a 3D background in photo? Uh, yeah, sure you can. Um, you can use it, uh, do it using uh, the 3D feature. Uh, Photoshop versions CS5, 6, and beyond have the 3D feature. And um, so you can create your background and then basically make a JPEG of it and use that as your background for any Photoshop files or images that you want to place on top of it. Um, Andrew McCann, hey from the UK. Hi, Andrew. Um, says here, uh, from India. Uh, I apologize, Tier Wa, Tier Wa, anyway. Um, <laughs> hi from, uh, hi to India. Um, from Florida, Mr. MNJ says, hey, from Florida, how you doing? It says, where do you work in your everyday life? What's your job? Philip Buckholm asks. Uh, well, I work in my, uh, in my home. I have a studio in my home uh, dedicated to uh, this kind of thing. Um, you know, I have... Um, I, I do all of my work here, my writing. I mean, essentially, it's my office slash studio. Um, and uh, I forgot what your last question was, but um, yeah, I mean, this is this is where I do it. Uh, from Morocco, Adwar Park. How you doing, Nubu from Russia? How you doing, Nubu? Uh, dancing in the 80s. Hey, from Oregon, it says. How you doing, dancing? Un1KUU. Hello from Finland. Slovenia. Jorge Matisse. This is very cool. I'm really enjoying it. Mario Figurido. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. From Portugal. Hi, how are you? Algeria. Red Prod Graphics. Imstorm says, please notice me. I just noticed you. Um, uh, wow, these are going really, really fast. From Germany, um, just a lot of... If you guys want your uh, question posted at the top for at least two minutes so I can at least answer them, because these are really flying by real quickly, there is something that YouTube uh, has called Super Chat. It's located at the bottom. There's a smiley face and a dollar sign. And if you want to um, ask your question, it'll be pinned for a certain amount of time. So at least I can see it because these are really flying by very, very quickly. Uh, Boise, Idaho, Randy Prescott. I know some people from Boise. How you doing? Um, Adele from York, UK. All right. Anyway. So, um, all right, so let's, so basically what you do is you, um, you start with an image uh, and 
you kind of want to you're going to want to crop it so the bottom part is sort of like where the uh, where the water would begin if you know what I'm saying but what is important right now is to check the resolution to ensure that your results will look similar to the one that I'm, I'm going to be doing so and that is at 150 pixels per inch so what you do is you go into image image size and right now the resolution is 300 you can see that here I'm going to change that to 150 okay all right to 150 and what I want to do so okay I'm gonna hit okay and now it's at 150 I'm going to press the control plus sign to enlarge it a little more to zoom in I'm gonna go back to canvas size this time all right what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this top middle arrow all right and change the inches to percent I'm gonna change the height to 200 okay and I'm going to click pixels now whatever this is you should write it down because we're going to refer to it later once we create the displacement map that will create the ripples in our water so right now my width is 1750 and the height is 1560 all right so you write down yours yours will be different I'm gonna click OK all right now the it's twice as high as it was before let me go back to chat uh, Sirias Jonata says I I have followed you your YouTube channel from Dubai that's nice I hope it's not too late in Dubai right now I, I'm doing this at this time so I could accommodate people in Europe and uh, Asia you know and elsewhere because before I did it at 10 o'clock at night in New York so I wanted to do it earlier in the day here to accommodate uh, breadcrumb one pound I don't know what that means it's the first time that um, if this is a super chat it's the first time so ask your question breadcrumb and I'll be happy to answer it Al Imran says I love your tutorials thank you so much it means a lot to me I'm in Portugal and it's 7 a.m. Aruk says okay so it's not too early right uh, hi from Poland Diana says hi from Poland your voice sounds good than many singers <laughs> Joshua Giabaraj says I, I um, um, thank you I'm a horrible singer but uh, um, I'm happy you like my voice Paul Fothergill chilling in Scotland great lessons excellent step-by-step -step. Brian Monahan it's 4 a.m. in Australia Jason Scott says geez Wow I'm really glad you could join me it uh, it brings warmth to my heart as the expression goes um, Stefan hello Marty from Sweden like your tutorials it uh, Biggie B says how how can I increase the resolution for a low picture um, you can in increase the resolution uh, but the problem is is that it's not necessarily going to make your image crisper you know sharper um, because the pixels essentially are being um, the the image is still going to be blurry if you increase your resolution um, it, it it's basically called uh, up res it's still going to be blurry I mean there's a lot of ways you can sharpen your image prior to that or even after that but it's never going to be um, as sharp as as your original if that makes sense okay so what we're going to do here is I'm going to make this into a smart object and the reason for this is so um, we can modify it non-destructively um, and I'm gonna click this icon and click convert to smart object if you see a little icon over here that means it's a smart object 
So, and by the way, just FYI, I showed this to other people, um, to, to my viewers on in the first live stream. What I do is when I create a tutorial, and you, I'll go over this later with you, but um, to make it more efficient for me and to uh, just, I don't like to waste time and fidget around. Once I come up with a look I like, I write down the settings. So for example, I don't know if you can see this now, but this here, this is like uh, one layer and I number them going up, the layers going up. That's, this is to create what we're looking at right now. And then the displacement later, we're going to be doing this. Okay, it's all numbered. It's, I'm sure it looks uh, uh, like gibberish, but um, there's method to my madness. And um, everything is basically, all, all the settings are, are, are there, so I can kind of refer to it and get exactly the same result, pretty close, to, um, to what my original image was. So, okay, so from this point, what we're going to do is we're going to... Actually, what we're going to do here... I'm going to go back to uh, canvas size, all right? And I'm going to change the two pixels here. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same thing. 1750 by 1560. That's what my original one was, and that's what whatever yours, whatever you wrote down earlier, is going to be the same as this. So from here, let's see. I'm just looking at my notes. So uh, canvas size uh, to okay. Got that. Got that. Got that. I'm going to make a copy of it. Control or Command J makes a copy. All right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to check Snap. So I'm going to go to View and make sure Snap is checked. If it isn't, if it isn't checked, just check it. Just basically check it, and that'll that'll um, that'll snap images as we move them to guidelines and other um, significant uh, elements in your Photoshop file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the bottom layer active. I'm going to click Control or Command T to open up my Transform tool. I'm going to click Control or Command Zero to fit it onto my screen. And I'm going to, you know what, guys? I apologize. I think I screwed up. So, and that, that happens. That happens. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to uh, essentially make sure snap is on. I'm going to bring the ruler down. And then I'm going to make a selection around the top layer, around the top port. Okay, and I'm going to essentially um, cut it out using Control or Command J. Now I'm going to take the Transform tool, go to the top, and basically drag it down to the bottom. All right, and I'm going to basically do the same. I'm going to click OK. And... Invert the selection, cut it out. So now we have this. Now we basically have uh, two two areas. We have the reflection. I'm going to hide the uh, guideline by pressing Control or Command H. See, so even even though I wrote down the settings, apparently uh, I screwed up too. But um, I wrote this down a few days ago. No excuses. But nevertheless, we can still continue. Um, all right, so what we're going to do with it, well, let me go back to the chat here. Night Course Channel says, uh, can I ask a question again? Okay, sure, anytime. Can you make a green screen background for photo? Uh, yeah, you can definitely make a green screen uh, background for a photo. Um, but again, it's not necessarily 
why do that? I mean, you can, if you need to uh, cut the photo out, you're not going to use a green screen. You're going to use selections and essentially cut it out from there. You use green screens to, uh, to uh, color key or chroma key um, objects or people on top of the background. Uh, that's actually moving. <laughs> it says, welcome to our world, Marty. I screw up following your <laughs> video. LOL. Isn't live streaming great? Carl Price says, yeah, you got that right. Jay Strange says, uh, Marty, you are awesome because of your tutorials. My graphic design skills have gotten so much better. I've been following them since you first started. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Uh, Skanje Sethi, I, I am from India, Photoshop. Photoshop course is very nice. Well, that's good. I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Okay, let's see if I don't screw up from now. I'm going to name the bottom layer Reflection. Okay. And I'm going to name the top layer Photo. By the way, you might notice that the um, these are not smart objects anymore because I cut them out and screwed up. So what I'm going to do is just to make it just so in case we need to change the uh, filters later, it's a good idea to to set this up non-destructively again. So I'm going to change this into a smart object, each one into a smart object, each layer. So this way we can modify the filters that we add to it, um, which might happen in my case today. Uh, sorry about that. Okay. Satisfying King says, Hi, sir. Shall I ask you one thing that how to make night effect for a day? I've done a couple of tutorials that uh, show you how to do that. Just go to my channel and you'll notice a um, where there's a magnifying glass on my channel. There's a field where you can type something in right next to it. Okay, so type in uh, night. Just type in night and all of my tutorials uh, will come up and a few of them actually show you how to do that, including how to create the Aurora Borealis and um, adding a moon to it. Um, so Obadi Mahmood says, hi, I just saw the live stream, LOL. Do you remember my question? I am sorry, Obeda, I do not remember it. You might want to ask me again. Do you have a silver play button of YouTube? Uh, Ayan asks, yes, I do. They YouTube gives uh, the silver play buttons when you get 100,000 viewers. And then they give the gold play button uh, when you hit a million. And a few weeks ago, I, I, I managed to uh, surpass 500,000. It's going to take me a few few more years to get to a million. I'm sure. I think it's like four. I think the it's like four years more, longer, according to the uh, analytics. Who knows? Uh, let's say um, Lafa Wan does says my Photoshop skills have gotten so much better since they started using your tutorials last year. I'm really happy about that. I'm really glad. That's what it's all about, right? Satisfying Kings, thanks, thanks for it, sir. Uh, hello from Namia. Shame, shame. Says, I like your little, uh, your the photograph of you. Uh, shame, shame. It's a guy laughing, smiling really widely. I don't know if that's you, but it's pretty funny. <laughs> it's good. I like it. Uh, Mario Hagra says, Sir, can you tell me how to start a business with Photoshop skills? for a teen like me. Um, Maro, I just basically get the word out there, create a website, um, show some work on, on your website that you've done, that you like, and post it to social media, uh, 
basically just get the word out. Uh, and I think that's really the best way of doing it uh, any way you can, except the smaller jobs in the beginning. And then um, if you have time, you know, get into the larger jobs. And basically, after a while, it'll become word of mouth. When I Many years ago, I did a lot of freelance work uh, when I was doing... Uh, so before computers, I did a lot of book jacket covers and album covers. And in the beginning, I would go to the publishers in, in you know in New York, and I would show my portfolio, and I would get some book jacket covers. And after a while, they called me, and that's what's going to happen with you or with anybody else. If you do a good job and they're happy with it, the word of mouth, they're going to be calling you, and they'll recommend you to other people, and it's. It's a process that basically builds up. Huib van Donegren, greetings from the Netherlands. Greetings back to you. Hello. Thanks from Austria. Helmut Herner says, I learned a lot from your tutorials. Thanks very much. I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> Romeo Russo says, go away. Well, okay, um, I can't, but you can. Um, glad to see you live, Nasir Shafiq says. Uh, Roach Dinka says, greetings from Mongolia, the Mongolia. Lucas Rodriguez says, hi from Brazil. 6549 Marcy says, Hi, Marty. Greetings from the Czech Republic. Love your tutorials very much. Easy to follow. You're a perfect teacher. That's very nice of you. I, I'm glad you're learning from me. Okay. So, okay, so now that I have that, I'm going to go into Motion Blur. So I'm going to go to Filter, Blur, and Motion Blur. Okay, I'm going to blur it. I'll make it 30 pixels. 10 to 30 pixels usually works. I'm going to click OK. Now, if you notice, because I made it into a smart object, you'll see it down here. The motion blur is now a smart filter. What does this mean? It means that I can turn it on and off. It means that I can change the, the uh, parameters it's, it gives me the flexibility. It'll give you the flexibility of um, changing it whenever you want, which is wonderful about smart filters. Okay, so... Hi, Uday from India. This is really good. Okay, Tack calls the name, says, Marty, can you say the user, the user, in your amazing voice? <laughs> You'll make my day. Thank you if you do so. The user, the user. There you go. I have no idea what, it's probably a private joke. I don't know, but, but I hope it made you happy. All right, so from Motion Blur, let's see now. We will go, all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to... All right, I'm going to create a layer. I'm going to hide this layer. I'm going to create a layer under it. How I do that, I'm going to press, I'm going to go to the new layer icon and press Control or Command as I click it. This creates a new layer below the active layer. All right, I'm going to name it Water. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it with a color. Now, you can either do it a few ways. You could either click your a foreground color here and open up the, uh, the color picker and type it in, or you can press Shift plus the F F5 key on your keyboard to open the fill window. All right, and if you click uh, Color, and click OK, the color picker will come up. Either way is fine. This way doesn't change your foreground color. Um, well, actually, it does. <laughs> but um, so I'm, I'm going to type it in. So it's 2, 9, 6, 
F, B, 7. That's the color I'm choosing. I'll click OK. All right. And the foreground color didn't change. I didn't have a lot of sleep last night. I apologize. <laughs> OK, so that's the color of the water. Michelle Levasseur says, I can't tell you how much I have learned from you, even when I only had PS Elements. Thank you for being one amazing resource. You know, you're, you're quite welcome, Michelle. I mean, this, as I mentioned in my first live stream, this, this is the main reason I do this, you know, because I really enjoy helping people. And in my own small way, I'm helping people people learn Photoshop and that's good. Uh, it's creative. You learn something, you know, why not? Why not? Uh, if you have knowledge in, in something, even if it's partial knowledge, I mean, you just to, to imp, uh, impart that onto, onto people, uh, to, to teach people, you know, it's a great feeling. It, 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 you know, I know in the beginning when I ask questions about things that I want to learn, when the person whom I'm asking is more than happy to answer them, it's basically, you know, it, that's who I'm trying to uh, emulate. You know, it made me feel good that they were trying to be helpful, that they were helpful. So I'm really glad about that. Um, okay, so that's the color right now. So what we're going to do at this point is I'm going to create a, a gradient. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to reflection, click reflection again, make it visible. I'm going to make it active. I'm going to click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask next to it. All right. I'm going to go to my gradient tool. And at the top, I'm going to click the black to transparent thumbnail. Okay, make sure my, uh, it's a linear gradient. The gradient is linear, that's what this is. Okay, and I'm gonna go to the bottom. I'm gonna press shift, which keeps my gradient tool vertical. I'm gonna bring it up to about here. And that kind of like, you know, if you go back and forth, you can see as I toggle back and forth, it makes it a little darker on the bottom, which is going to make it more realistic. What this does basically is the layer mask is really like a stencil. That's how I describe it. Think of layer masks, masks as stencils. White reveals and black masks out. So what I'm doing is I'm, mask, I'm gradually masking out this image next to it on the bottom, keeping it revealed where the white is. So when you mask out the bottom, what is it going to do? It's going to reveal the layer under it, which is the water. And that's how layer masks work. Okay. Uh, Ger Gerard Rotish or Rotich says, Hi, Marty, do you ever use Lightroom? I do use Lightroom. Um, I should use Lightroom more. Matter of fact, I'm going to get into it more, um, but not as much. Um, Lightroom is a really great... Lightroom is a wonderful application for photographers. Um, and you can... I mean, it's great for Photoshop users as well. And it, it's included, by the way, in the Adobe Creative Cloud Photography Plan which includes the latest version of Photoshop, Lightroom, and 20 gigs of cloud storage. So if you want it, I do give a discount. I'm a, um, an affinity partner of, from, uh, of Adobe. So what that means is you can get a discount uh, by clicking a link. I have a link in, if you go to the video's description under this tutorial, there's a link. And if you click on the link, you'll get 20% off for a full year. So instead of $9.99 per year USD currency, it's $7.99. So it's 20% off. So, hey, you know, it's saving you money. 
If you're into getting the latest version of Photoshop and are tired using your physical copies of C2, uh, CS2 and CS3, and which can't do many of the things that can be done on CC, make use of it, you know? It's a, it's a good deal. Okay, so where was I? So from here at this point, now that we have the layer mask showing the water, what we're going to do is we're going to make this layer and this layer into a smart object. So I'll shift click this layer. Let me open this up a little bit more to, to uh, there we go. So you can see the uh, layers panel. And I'm going to go into this icon and click convert to smart object. That basically makes a smart object of the water and the reflection layer. Jerry C says, hi, Marty. I'm an art student and I'm way ahead in my Photoshop class. Thanks to you. Glad to hear it, Jerry. Uh, Mario Figueroa says, hey guys on chat, be discreet and just listen. Don't use word. <laughs> Okay, well, this is what happens in live chats. Uh, Mario is uh, telling some others to be uh, to be cool. Apparently. Anyway, I don't have a moderator, so um, it's just me on this thing. So ask your questions, and I'll try to answer them. And uh, anyway, okay. So from here. Uh, let's see. All right. So from here at this point, I'm going to go into my ho other handy dandy uh, list of things to do that I wrote down and hopefully I won't screw this up. All right. So at this point, we're going to create the displacement map. We're going to create the ripples that that's going to make the water really look like water and not like ice. Okay. Um, and to do that, we're going to create a new layer. So go to File and New. Okay. What we're going to do, we're going to type in under Pixels. I already typed it in earlier. Type in your height and width and resolution. Okay. Make sure RGB color is, is, uh, is chosen. 8 bits. And uh, yeah, white, that's fine. So click, click Create. Now, what you want to do is you're going to, let's see, uh, unlock the layer. Okay, so we're going to unlock the layer, which allows us to modify it, use transforms, uh, the transform tool to expand it, do all sorts of things. That's what uh, unlocking that chain link does. All right, and we're going to we're going to zoom out. Now you can either press the uh, Control minus key, or you can go to Navigator. If you don't see Navigator, go into View and Navigator, and just slide it down so it's really kind of tiny, like that. All right, and what you're going to do is you're going to go to Edit, Transform and perspective. All right. And you're going to go to a bottom corner. And when you see a white arrowhead, you're going to drag it out. Okay. And what you're going to do is you're going to, I'm going to drag it out to about, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make it even smaller because I'm going to have to drag it out even more. All right, so I'm going to go to Edit, Transform, and Perspective, and I'm going to drag it out 3,000%. Now, if you look up in the top part of your, uh, well, I'll show you. Let me let me just drag it out to about 3,000 or so. Right here, you see this? It's 3,033, but drag it out to about 3,000%. Click the check mark to accept it. 
Okay. All right, guys. I'm embarrassed to say that I screwed up again. I don't know. I, I really apologize. I'm going to bring it back up again. I'm going to go to filter. Noise. The, the Transforming it comes later. I forgot to do it. I'm, I'm Anyway, noise and add noise. I'm going to go to the amount is going to be 400%. I'm going to blur it. Go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. I'm going to blur it two pixels. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to channels. I'm going to click the red channel. I'm going to go to filter, stylize, and uh, emboss. I'm going to make it 90 degrees, the angle, the height is one pixel, and the amount is 500%. All right. I'm going to click OK. Then I'm going to click the green channel. All right. Go back to filter, stylize, and emboss. And this time I'm going to make it 180 degrees right here. Height is one pixel, amount is 500%. I'm going to go to RGB, the RGB layer, okay, and I'm going to go to layers. Now, <laughs> I'm going to reduce it down, all the way down. I'm going to go to edit, and, uh, oh, actually before I do that, i got to click, the, uh, click off the uh, lock. I'm going to go to edit transform and perspective. Now I'm going to drag it out to 3000. Okay. I'm going to click the check mark to accept it. I'm going to press control or command zero to enlarge it up. And I'm going to crop it because the it, right now the image extends 3000% on both uh, 1500% on both sides. So I'm going to crop it. I'm going to go to press Control or Command A to select it. And then I'm going to go to Image and Crop. I'm going to deselect it by pressing Control or Command D. Now I'm going to go to Transform, Control or Command T to, to bring up the transform. Make sure Snap is checked, which it is right here. And I'm going to drag it down to the middle. Let me just uh, make sure, before I do that, let me make sure. Yeah, okay. Controller Command T. Right there, it snapped. And I'm going to press Enter or Return. All right. Let me go to uh, chat. Hey Marty, will you ever teach us how to use Adobe Illustrator? Do you have you ever used it? Um, uh, Rappy asks. Uh, I uh, I spoke about this a little bit in my first live stream. I did use Illustrator. Um, uh, no, to answer your first question, no, I'm not going to do uh, tutorials on it. And here's the reason why. <clears throat> um, I forgot how to use it. I haven't used it. If you don't use it, you lose it. <clears throat> I used to use Illustrator uh, in when I worked at NBC, uh, and then I left seven years ago. I used to work for uh, um, a television show called Late Night with Conan O'Brien for 15 years, and I did a lot of their logos that went on the road to Chicago and San Francisco and L.A., and I would design the logos for that and a few other things, and I used Illustrator for that, uh, vector-based. It was wonderful. But I haven't used it in like seven years, more than seven years. And um, I, 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 so yeah, I just don't use it anymore. And uh, I'm just concentrating on Photoshop. But I, I forgot pretty much how to use Illustrator, you know. So if you, lesson to be learned, if you ever want to keep 
if you never want to like uh, uh, lose your abilities in uh, in anything, uh, don't stop using it. You know, just keep at it. Um, you work for Coco, Lunchbox says. I did work for Coco. You know where Coco came from, I'm sure, as a, as a Conan O'Brien fan, it, um, Tom Hanks uh, dubbed him Coco one, one, <laughs> one uh, evening uh, on the air, and it stuck. Uh, will you ever start tutorials on Adobe After Effects? Again, uh, no, for the same reasons. Um, After Effects... As I, as I mentioned in my first live stream, it's the best, most creative program I've ever used. It's incredible. You can do anything on After Effects. I loved After Effects. But I haven't used it. Um, and, and, you know, I just, I just love, I mean, it, I love working on Photoshop right now. And I want, to, I want to concentrate on Photoshop and teaching you all that I know in Photoshop. And if I spread myself too, too, on too many uh, applications, it just, I don't want to do that. You know, I don't want to bounce back and forth. So if, if so that's, that's the reason, really. Um, author Polaris says, let them know about your website. Thank you for your tutorials. Um, okay, so author, um, yeah, I have a website, uh, bluelightningtv.com. Uh, if you, I've, I've done over 500 tutorials, so if you, you know, if you're interested in the subject, um, I'm sure a tutorial is there. Same thing on YouTube, just to, on the, on my channel page, just go to the magnifying glass, type in a subject, uh, in the field, and, uh, a bunch of tutorials will pop up, and, uh. Can you, uh, Blue Palette asks, can you make a tutorial how to make uh, 80s neon style poster. Well, I did, I did, a I know what you're talking about. Um, uh, I've done a number of tutorials showing how to create neon. It just would be a simple matter of taking that effect, that neon effect, and applying it to an 80s look. Um, I've done a bunch of tutorials showing how to create posters. I've done dozens of posters. So you can apply the neon to that. Um, that's a good idea actually for a tutorial. I might, I might uh, do that. So thanks, thanks for the suggestion. Jerry C says, you can spend a lifetime on Photoshop and still not know everything you can do with it. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, Photoshop is a built-in redundancy. There are many ways of doing the same thing. Uh, basically of arriving at the same result, but, uh, but doing it differently. And there's, uh, there are always quicker ways or the ways can change depending on, on, um, on a number of factors, you know, the characteristics of your image and how, what you're trying to accomplish. But you're absolutely right. It's a very deep program too. You know, before I was mentioning about After Effects, uh, I, I, I think of Photoshop, if you think of Photoshop as a, as a square, After Effects is a cube, if that makes sense. Maybe it doesn't, but it makes sense to me. Um, can you make, uh, Vendam Va Shan, Shan Muka at, uh, anyway, asks, can you make tutorials on filters and levels? Well, I mean, I, I use filters and levels in almost every tutorial. So eventually you get it, you know what I mean? I mean, it's to, to devote an entire tutorial on a specific, I only reserve tutorials on specific features uh, if those features were just introduced to a new version of Photoshop and if that feature warrants devoting an entire tutorial like 3D or vanishing point or puppet warp those deserve entire tutorials you know or um tilt shift and i and again i've i've done tutorials uh on those jure matisse asks, notice me 
I just noticed you. Uh, can you please make animal tutorial next? I mean, I did I did a tutorial showing how to how to create an animal face, how to make yourself look like an animal, uh, a tiger. For, um, you might want to check that out. Mirror. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. Anyway, so now that we have now that we have this uh, this displacement map, I'm going to go back to my to my uh, Photoshop image. Okay, my reflection layer is active, and I'm going to go to Filter, Distort, and Displace. I'm going to displace it horizontally, thirty pixels and the vertical scale 60 pixels stretch to fit repeat edge pixels I'm gonna click OK all right oh actually what I didn't do uh, one thing I should do that I didn't do is I'm going to save it save the displacement map to my desktop okay and I'm gonna call it displacement And I'm going to click Save. So right now it's on my desktop. Now I'm going to go back. I'm going to go to Filter, Distort, and Displace. 30, 60, click OK. I'm going to click Displacement and click Open. See what happens? I don't know if you can see it here, but I'm going to zoom in more. But you can kind of see the rippling, the rippling effect here. Now you might notice on the top, it's a, it's showing a little bit of the water. That's because the motion blur um, didn't completely. It 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 kind of made the top transparent. So all I have to do here is I just have to click uh, Controller Command J. Whoop! Excuse me. Click Controller Command J to make a copy, and. I'm going to actually a better way of doing this is to click control or command T to open my transform tool and drag it up a little bit see and it goes away so that's the way to do that uh, Mustafa Khan says sir I'm from India and time is 12 a.m. Wow I hope you're not as tired as I am today. Next time uh, on live stream three, uh, I promise you will get enough sleep. <laughs> I hope this isn't too confusing. Okay, so yeah, um, and finally, really, the next step, the next step will be to um, create a. Uh, a new layer click the new layer icon all right and here's the uh, and I'm gonna I'm just gonna type in shoreline shoreline and I'm going to open up my rectangular marquee tool and drag it across a mm, little thicker what I'm gonna do is basically darken this area um, just to kind of set it in a little bit okay I'm gonna feather the selection go to select Modify and Feather. I'll feather it 20 pixels. Click OK. I'm going to fill it with black, which obviously is way too black, but don't don't worry. I'm going to deselect it by pressing Control or Command D. I'm going to change it to Soft Light and reduce the opacity to, to whatever you want. I'm going to reduce it to 60 50 um, percent. There you have it. Now, a couple of things. One last thing, actually. You see on the bottom, there's a little bit of funkiness going on. That's easy to uh, solve. Uh, actually, for that, I'm going to make a copy of the reflection by pressing Control or Command J. 
and it goes away. You see, it went away now. So that's how to create a water reflection from scratch. Let me go to the chats. Derp, Derpensan says, amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. It's a Photoshop is an amazing, amazing tool. Chema1103 uh, asks, I'm doing one of your projects in class right now, the Tron part, one and two. Doing the Tron tutorial was a lot of fun. Uh, I created, basically, I created um, sort of like a, a futuristic car uh, on, a, on, a, on a futuristic grid, just, just like Tron with, mo, mo, you know, it looks like, a, like an old, like retro um, car on a, on, a, on a landscape, on a grid landscape in an old retro video game, if that makes sense, just like the movie. That was a lot of fun. Likabo asks, hello, mate. Greetings from the UK. Greetings right back at you. Melissa, Melissa Ilio Gaston says, that's an amazing tutorial. I would never have guessed how to create this that simply. Thank you. You're welcome. There, there were different... I did a few other uh, water reflection tutorials in the past prior to this using different techniques, but I think this technique is the most effective and the simplest. The unholy postal says, voila. The MMM11 says, asks, when did you begin YouTube? Uh, I started posting tutorials on YouTube in November of 2011. So it's, what is that, six and a half years? Is that what it is? Or five and a half years, I'm not sure. But yeah, 20, 2011. Leonard Huber asks, Greetings from Germany. Where are you from? I'm from New York. I uh, lived in New York pretty much all my life. A few years ago, I traveled to Italy and France. Had a great time. I've traveled all over the United States. Uh, and um, But yeah, New Yorker. Harry Simon says, show us original and after images. Okay, so this is the original image. <clears throat> Let me uh, actually save it. You can save it by going to, uh, in the history panel. And if you don't see history, go to window and history. <clears throat> click the icon and click new snapshot. And just click OK. That basically um, allows you to go back to the snapshot here and click it. But to see the original shot, I'm just going to click the top one above it, which is this. So this is the original, this is the original shot, and this is the finish. Mario Hagras asks, "What makes you enjoy using Photoshop?" Uh, it's a, it's, it's a one, it's. It's, it's a creative outlet. It's a wonderful creative outlet and the potential, you can create a lot of incredible images in Photoshop. It's very, um, I love the logic, the logic that is Photoshop, the filters and the effects and the fact that all of these layers are individual layers, but in combination of each other, create one final image it's constructing a graphic from like a, the layers are almost like the bricks if you know what i'm saying and you're constructing uh, this this final house and uh you design the house you create it, it it's just it's <clears throat> it's really endless it's it's just it's fun it's basically fun CEO Calcutta asks, please visit India. Tons of fans over, over here. Well, that's, yeah, I, I, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, India, the countries that seem to enjoy my tutorials or view my tutorials the most, the first one, for, first and foremost, obviously, uh, is the United States. Um, and 
some other countries that are into my tutorials are uh, India, Germany, England, um, the Philippines, some Australia, but uh, it's growing. <clears throat> you know, it's growing. The fan base is growing. If any of you guys, uh, I'd appreciate it if you could just spread the word. Just, you know, I'd love to get as many viewers as possible. If you know anybody that is thinking of learning Photoshop, um, I'd appreciate the shout out. So on social media, whatever you can do, that would be great. I'm always looking for new viewers, new subscribers. Scott Gamble says, when I want to learn something new, Marty Geller from Blue Lightning is the only teacher I listen to. I, <laughs> thank you, Scott. I appreciate it. There, there, there are a lot of wonderful Photoshop teachers out there and um, a lot to choose from. And you can learn from, from all of them. But the fact that you keep coming back to me means, means a lot to me. So thank you. I appreciate that. Yuri... Yuri Matisse asks, show us your Photoshop projects, please. Um, yeah, maybe I'll do that. I can do that. But let me answer some questions first. Salvador Marley asks, I use your toots in school. I'm a teacher. That's, that's great. I appreciate that. SpongeBob says, the phrase that changed a lot of my life. I don't know what that phrase is, but um, Chemo1103 says, I'm doing this from Mexico. I will spread the word. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, SpongeBob says, this is Marty. <laughs> this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. That's the phrase that changed his life. I get it. Thank you. <clears throat> Derp, Der Pension asks, how old, how old are you when you started Photoshopping? Um, I started probably, um, I started, I started in my 40s, believe it or not. Um, and what, what, so I learned, I, I'm an artist that came from pre-computer ages. I, I kind of call myself a designosaur in the sense that, you know, um, I've been around a while and I learned before computers. Uh, real airbrush, you know, real paint, real watercolors, you know. And so I was trained in the, in actual hands-on with materials uh, took life drawing, you know, but just the whole, the whole thing. Went to Pratt Institute. Uh, it's an art school in Brooklyn, New York. And um, so I learned, I learned that. And then when I started working at NBC, we, we uh, tr started, started to get into uh, a, a program called Quantel Paintbox, which is an English company that was the precursor to Photoshop. And uh, from 1985 to about 19, 1984 to about 1995, 96 or so, it was um, the main, the really the only uh, tool that broadcast artists use. So at least in, in the United States, we used the Quantel paint box. It wasn't as powerful as Adobe products, but it, you know, was 72 PPI. That's, you know, it was very, very simple. But it did, you know, it was pretty powerful given the fact that prior to that, there, was, there wasn't anything to use. Photoshop was in its infancy. Photoshop was, you know, wasn't powerful enough at the time. And then, at least in the beginning, in the mid 80s, and then of course, in the mid '90s, Photoshop started. Adobe started to make Photoshop more, more, and more powerful, and then finally, it would be became so powerful and so um, usable. As and, and it was a lot cheaper, by the way. Um, the Quantel paint box, believe it or not, was three hundred thousand dollars per paint box. I know it's crazy. So, yeah. So it was I was in my forties at the time. 
The MMM11 asks, have you ever been on a TV show? Uh, I've never been in front. I've never been on camera on a TV show, but I've worked behind the cameras for on four TV shows for like 35 years. SpongeBob Bob asks, how much time do you spend on Photoshop to call myself a professional? I'm a pharmacist, most of the time busy, but I learned a lot from you for so long, but I'm, um, I don't think I'm giving it enough time. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, to be called a professional, I mean, you know, I mean, it, it, professionals are people that, that make money from doing what they do. That's, you know. That's the difference between a hobbyist and a professional. I mean, if, you, if you're a hobby, hobbyist and you do it all the time and you, you, you make money on it, uh, uh, most of your money on it, make a living on it, you're, prof you're considered a professional. Um, it, takes, it takes, I mean, you have to really work on it pretty much every day, you know, um, to really, you know, just do a lot of experimenting. As somebody pointed out earlier, Photoshop is a very deep program. I mean, there's always something to learn. So, um, you know, but uh, there comes a point, and it really feels good when you get to that point. There comes a point, whenever you're learning something new, all of a sudden things start to click. You get to kind of like get that, that, oh, I get it. You know, I get it. And at that point your gear shifts to the next high, higher gear. You, it all makes sense. And you really start to get into it at that point. But that's that one point where things click. That's exciting. That's the exciting point. Vento Roverso asks, you work with Illustrator too? Um, as I mentioned it earlier, uh, I, not anymore. I, I used to, and I haven't used it in seven years, so I don't I don't use Illustrator anymore. It's just I just concentrate on Photoshop. I'm 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 constantly um, diving into Photoshop. That's that's my application that that I'm I love working on, and that's what I do. Uh, Scott Gamble says Marty has a ton of fans in Canada. That's great. I love Canada. Canada is fantastic. Way back when I went to, uh, I visited a camera a number of times actually. I hitchhiked cross country in 1971, and I went through Canada. I went from New York up through the up through Canada. Uh, what was that? Um, it's a major major road, Queen Elizabeth's Way. Does that make sense? Down into Detroit, over the Ambassadors Bridge into Detroit, and it's my phone. Excuse me just hung up there they might call back um and down into detroit and then uh hitchhiked to san francisco uh but anyway uh in the late 60s i went to a um uh, a canadian rock concert called strawberry fields i think it was in it wasn't toronto I'm not sure anyway it was a three-day concert three-day festival it was great and uh, went to uh, Habitat. Anyway, uh, all about math. Have you, let me go into, uh, this is probably, I don't know if you can see, I, hopefully you can see uh, me a little larger, but not that you, <laughs> you might not want to see me a little larger, but anyway. Um, oh yeah, uh, Scott says you came through Windsor, Ontario. All right. Uh, Dimitri says, how do you add lighting to an object? Um, there's actually, you can add lighting to an object. Let me go back. Let me go back to the original, original shot here. Um, there's actually lighting. If you go to uh, filter, now sometimes actually the lighting filter crashes Photoshop. I don't know why it does that. It's like a glitch. If it happens, I'll open up Photoshop again. So go into fi uh, filter, okay, and render and lighting effects. 
Now it, it's it's opening it up right now. Hopefully it won't crash. Come on. Come on. Open up. You can do it. It crashed. That's all right. I'll open it up again. When I eat, when I yeah, when I open it up again, it usually uh, it's then it works. The second time around, it works. While it's opening up, it says, "What is the latest version of Photoshop?" All about math asks. The latest version of Photoshop, as I'm doing this live stream, is CC 2017. Uh, Adobe updated this version a few times, but that's what's great about subscribing to the Creative Cloud. It updates. It tells you when the when the update is, and you can you download the update immediately, and you get all the uh, you know uh, all the new stuff. Nubu says you have many fans in Russia, by the way. A lot of friends of mine and me learned something from you tutorials. Sorry for my bad my bad English. You don't have bad English. I you write very well. All right. I'm going to go to the all right well I can do it on this actually let me let me flatten this image flatten it that just fl basically takes all the layers <clears throat> and flattens it into one layer so I'm gonna go back to filter if it if the uh, lighting effects crashes again I won't use it but it's there if you ever want to use it it's there hopefully yours won't crash uh, this I think this is gonna uh no it's available so this is the lighting effects and you know you've got like hot you know you can basically change the scale width <clears throat> um, the this little dial down here makes it brighter you know you can change the ambiance change the color you know um, it's really cool, actually. I've done a number. I've used this in a few of my tutorials. Um, some of my horror, my uh, I've done a couple of uh, horror tutorials uh, using using the um, using lighting effects. I have a brick wall, and I basically want it to look like a dungeon, so I use the lighting effects to kind of create this eerie uh, spotlight that kind of is glancing over the brick and fading out near the bottom. So it feels like you're like in a, like there's a little light maybe coming from 10 feet or 20 feet above. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. It says, cannot see what you're doing. Oh geez, I'm sorry. You're right. Let me go, let me go back. Let me go back to the um, to my Photoshop file. You're absolutely right. I apologize. So yeah, you go into filter, um, render, and lighting effects, and here it is. Sorry about that. I was so busy rambling on that um, I didn't even, you know, I didn't even realize I was in a wrong scene. Anyway, let me cancel out of that. Yeah, everybody's saying, can't see the workspace. Where's the workspace? It says, oh, okay, thank you. Now it's better. Yeah, sorry about that. Wow, I've been on for over an hour. An hour and nine minutes and counting. Um, this went really, really fast. I hope you learned a little bit more about Photoshop. Um, maybe you lo learned a little bit more about me. And, uh, I mean, if you were curious. And um, I will do another one of these because this is a lot of fun. I like to um, I like to do these. Uh, somebody derp de 
Mr. Penson asks, do you edit videos as well? Yeah, I edit my videos in a program called Camtasia. Um, I'll, I'll, before I leave, I'll, I'll quickly show you that. Um, so I'm going to open up Camtasia. And um, it's made by a company called TechSmith. And it's the most robust out of all of the, I, I like it. Um, this is not the most recent version. This, uh, I don't like the recent version, frankly. So I'm gonna open up, uh, open up uh, an older project um, of mine and uh, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna open up the, the water, water reflection uh, one. And I'm going to pick the most recent one, which I think is this. And I'm going to uh, let me open up this one. I think this might be the latest, the latest one. But yeah, I mean, what this does, what Camtasia does, is it it takes uh, your video and audio. It records your audio, so it records my voiceover allows me to to edit the audio and video frame by frame. Uh, it also allows me to zoom, make zooms, add little circles, you know, it, 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 it can animate things. All of my, by the way, all of my intros that I've been doing, uh, in animated intros, bringing in graphics, um, all done in here, all done in, in Camtasia. Um, it um it'll open it takes a while it depends on the on the complexity of the camtasia uh file how many you know what's involved now as you can see this tutorial is 11 minutes see it's 11 minutes and six seconds um but basically giving giving you an idea of what this is so this here is the music down here, track one and track two. Um, I'm sponsored by two, I have two uh, company, music library companies. One is in England called Beat Suite, great company. And the other's in Germany called Sound Market, another really good company. And they give me access to their entire library uh, in exchange for uh, giving them credit in my video's description. Uh, they have wonderful, if you ever need any music, um, it's, it's, it's great. So I basically edit them together, the, the music, with my graphics. Um, this, this track three here, all, all along here, this is um, my, audio, my voiceover. These are the graphics, this track, track four. Track five are what they call call-outs. Callouts is sort of like little, you know, little uh, red. Well, you can make them any color you want, but they're arrows. They're you know, um, and above this is the watermark down here. So if you you know you basically and then you can you know there's um, you do you transitions. So right now, if I want to fade from this image to this image, I add a fade and it'll fade. You see what's happening? So that's basically, that's basically uh, what I use to edit my, my uh, tutorials. So I want to thank you again for joining me. I will let you know when I'm going to do the, my next live stream. And I really look forward to having you, having you uh, join me at the time. And I am going to check out. Thanks very much.